You know, according to a rabbinic tradition, there is a midrash, a teaching from the book of Psalms, on the book of Psalms, and it says, when a person makes their way in the world, a retinue of angels walks before them and proclaims, make way for the image of the Holy One of Blessing. Just love that teaching. That every person has divinity inside of them, without exceptions. So much so that the angels are saying, make way. Here comes God's presence. Adonai sefatai tiftachu fi yagitahi latechu. God, please help me again. Help me open my mouth so I can speak your praise. Adonai, open my heart so that I can reach my congregants' hearts. Holy One of Blessing, open my mind so that I can learn from my friends, from strangers, from those with different experiences of my own so that I can praise you by doing good, by being compassionate and being present for others. That, I think, is the real work of praise that you seek. I've been thinking a lot about our country, left-wing, right-wing, people concerned about all different issues and how I really believe we're in this together. And there's so much to confront together. And there's so much pain that each of us is carrying. And sometimes I feel like we are just plain old overwhelmed. And what I'm hearing from our congregants, from this little community in, in Boulder County and beyond, is that I don't know what to do anymore. In Jewish tradition, there's something, in fact, in lots of ancient literature, but there's something called a lament. A lament. Think back to the scroll of lamentations in the Bible. It starts with Echa. In fact, that's the name of it in Hebrew. Echa is like Ech, and Ech means how. When we ask how to do something in the English, we're waiting for an answer. We're waiting for, for details. In biblical Hebrew, whenever you see an Ech, there is no answer. It just expresses our hurt and our questions, and our yearnings, and our longings. In the book of Samuel, we see David crying over the death of his dear, dear friend Jonathan. And he says, Eich, how the mighty has fallen. In Ezekiel, after all of these difficulties of living in exile, he says, Eich, again, and there's no answer to his asking how. It's just a cry. Maybe it's a yell. Ashkenazi Jews throughout Jewish history, but particularly during those crusades, those massacres during the crusades, you have all of this new rabbinic literature of them just asking, how could this possibly happen to us? Massacre after massacre, supposedly in God's name, and our people are feeling decimated and devastated. Eich in the Torah isn't about seeking information. Moshe Halbertal, a Jewish, Israeli, Orthodox philosopher, thinker, he talks about it as, as a word for bewildered protest. And while on one hand I think it's kind of fancy language, on the other hand I think it's so true. Think about it, bewildered protest, Ech. It's an experience of grief. And sometimes these, these laments don't even have the word how or Ech in it. By the waters of Babylon, we wept. We were yearning for Jerusalem. And as we were in our period of mourning and feeling these tears, the Babylonians came over to us and said, hey, play us some of those Jewish songs just to mock and ridicule. That's our lament. 
Woe, O Jerusalem, if I forget you. That's a lament. But we can't only live in the wailing. We can't only live in the crying or the yelling. What I so deeply appreciate about our tradition, not Reformed Jewish tradition, not Orthodox Jewish tradition, just Jewish tradition, is that there is a sense of radical hope that comes and follows a lament. Don't forget what happens in the book of Lamentations. There is this terrible, graphic, really brutal story of the destruction of the first temple before our understanding that something like that could happen with the Holocaust, with the Shoah, the destruction of the temple was the primary, awful, traumatic experience of the Jewish people. Perhaps even more than slavery. And Lamentations talks about it in such graphic ways. And at the very, very end, there are two lines at the book of Lamentations, the last two lines. One says, return again. And then the last line is something so sad, but our rabbis say, you can't, add, you can't end on such a note of desperation. It has to be on the message of return again to the times of old, to the better days. And I think that hope isn't, and you've heard me say this before, over and over and over again, it's not a wish, it's a conviction, it's the work. You have hope in your life, then we have to figure out how to take better care of each other and take better care of the stranger and take better care of the folks that are different from us because we know what it's like to be different. That's our memory. That's our master story. Echa doesn't offer solutions. The scroll of Lamentations just shows pain. It's graphic. And the experience of destruction shows hurt. There is somebody I've recently discovered is he's a rabbinic student. He's a rabbinic student at the Reconstructing Rabbinical College in Philadelphia. His name is Dr. Koach Baruch Fraser. Koach Baruch Fraser, he's a doctor because he's a, an audiologist and for many years really helped people with hearing. And so when he speaks, he talks a lot about listening. But his listening is also of another kind because he's black, he's Jewish, and he's transgender. And koach, koach, by the way, means strength. Baruch means blessed. And Fraser is his family name. And he talks about anti-Semitism and anti-blackness and anti-trans and all of these other anti-things that are out in our world. And they're all parts of him. And there's some of that I'm able to get. We know that there's anti-Semitism increasing in our country and in our state and in the world. But for him, he says that any day, one of his symbolic siblings dies from some kind of act of hatred. Someone with one of his experiences dies. And I was taken so aback with that. And he talks about how there's no time to mourn because you're always moving or he's always moving from one experience of grief or threat to another one. I don't have that experience. I get angry. I get sad. But my mourning sometimes is different if it's something that hits deep into the Jewish community or my family, then I really have that experience. Pittsburgh, Poway. But Fraser is experiencing it over and over again in different communities that he's a part of. He says that there's only time to lament for a moment. 
with no answers because someone is murdered for existing. That's his experience. He talks about a formula in his own contemporary way, a modern way, about a lament. He talks about an address. There's an address, dear God, dear source of all life. He talks about the experience of distress. Why in the world would this happen? He talks about another stage where you stop and remember that there was a tragedy. And in fact, these are very similar to the laments remembering the massacres from the crusaders stop and remember where there was a tragedy and then he talks about making a plea but for him it's not just a plea for god to intervene but a plea for god to help us find the strength to help us make a repair and then he is strong enough to conclude with gratitude i feel like I'm in the midst of lamenting, and so are you. I feel like we are sharing a lament when we know that there's now 116,000 deaths in the United States from coronavirus. 1,500 just in Colorado, over 400,000 around the world in just a few months' time. And at the same time, in thinking about others, there are many that are marking this as a pride month where our friends and our family and our congregants who are also part of an LGBTQ plus community are celebrating in some ways all that they have achieved. And this very Shabbat also marks the fourth anniversary of the Pulse nightclub massacre, which killed 49 innocent human beings in Orlando. I want to cry out, Eicha, how could all of this be happening in our society, in our world? How many people need to hurt? How many people need to be sick? How many people need to fight cancer? How many people need to live on ventilators? How many people feel distraught or hungry or don't have enough? And it feels from you, I've been hearing this. It feels like there's nothing to do to change it. So when I cry out, and when you cry out, and when protesters cry out, when my daughters cry out, when black and brown and indigenous friends and neighbors cry out, when others in this congregation cry out, can we just listen without trying to fix it? Sometimes we just need to cry. Let's listen, let's sit with it, let's be present. I always think about when I give this kind of a sermon, I always think about all of the advice that I received when my father died when I was 15, all of the people telling me how I should feel, what I should do, and I really wanted to tell them, well, this is being recorded, I shouldn't say what I wanted to tell them. What I really wanted to tell them is to leave me alone. Just listen to my lament. My 15-year-old me couldn't say it that way. But sometimes we just need to yell and cry. Say, how could it happen? And for someone to physically, one day again, emotionally through a screen, just be present and listen and then connect, and then share the love. And that's where the hope comes in. Rabbi Shai Held is an Orthodox rabbi in Manhattan. He did a teaching recently and he quotes Abraham Ibn Ezra. He's a medieval Jewish commentator and Ibn Ezra teaches that from a religious perspective, one who witnesses an act of oppression and remains silent is morally equivalent to the one who commits the act in the first place. There are no innocent bystanders in Jewish tradition. So Rabbi Held asks, will we live our lives 
in ways that reflect an unshakable commitment to the dignity and worth of all human beings without exception, will we work to build a society that reflects universal dignity and worth without exception? So let's do the lament. Let's cry and mourn and then return to hope. Scream and yell and then get back to work. Cry if you need and then make a connection. Linda Hirschhorn is a Jewish uh, writer, songwriter. And years ago in 1982, she wrote this melody in support of a janitor strike, a janitor strike at UA movie theaters. And she joined in their picket line and circled round and round and round at them with them. That is for me, not just a circle of freedom or of peace, it is a circle which is a bond and a connection of strength. And it's one where everybody is equal in a circle. And going round and round and round, lifting up your voices for whatever the cause, for whatever the cause, and I really mean that, we're not silent. We stand up for purpose. We live out our Torah. We live out our Torah. And we move towards hope. This is the melody 